and we have Fiona and Andy, and they're going to introduce themselves uh, when we get to the speaker slot, which will be next. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I don't know if Fiona, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, now? thank you. Hi, I'm Fiona Romeo. I'm in the culture and heritage team at the Wikimedia Foundation. rolling out a tool that adds alt text uh, to images using the Wikimedia apps. We're testing it out here today, so you're the first one to see it. Um, and we're going to get your very honest feedback, and we'll talk about why this is all important. But to give you an idea of how this got prioritized, um, when it connects to the movement strategy, particularly recommendation number two, of improving user experience by supporting more clients, with most advances accessibility guidelines. And so um, our annual plan also rolls up to the movement strategy. And so the annual plan for this year, we have different buckets. And one of the buckets is related to supporting growth for high quality content um, within the world's most linguistically diverse, trusted, and comprehensive free knowledge ecosystem by enabling and supporting high quality and accessible experiences. So it's a lot of words, it's like a word soup. But basically, um, this is the objective that we're trying to um, help support. And our hypothesis for supporting this objective is that if we make it, um, like reduce the barriers for adding alt text to images, that it moves us closer to this. So um, Fiona is going to start us off by kind of giving you an idea of why this is important with the current landscape is as far as alt text on images um, within our projects. And then Angie is going to contextualize it as far as um, some initiatives that have already been done. Um, and then I'm going to give you an idea of what the long-term vision of the prototype or of the suggested edits tool could be, like what the absolute best case of it will look like. Um, and then you'll be able to test it and tell me if you think this is a terrible idea. <laughs> drive 10 times the engagement that citations do. Our communities and our product teams have been responding to this challenge of how do we better illustrate our Wikipedia and other projects. So first there was an initiative from the community, a campaign called Wikipedia Pages Wanting Photos, which is pretty self-explanatory, but the idea was there are unillustrated Wikipedia pages and could we encourage our community members to add those images to pages and it really came out of the experience that organizers had had with the Wiki Loves campaigns where they were generating lots of really high quality, beautiful imagery but it wasn't all kind of being used. Um, the product team has also developed some suggested image tasks in the newcomer experience. So again, if there are unillustrated uh, articles on Wikipedia, we know an image that might be relevant, it can be suggested and you decide whether or not to include it. And then suggested images notifications for edits. So you better take this article, and hey, or, or you haven't really watched this, and we know that there is now an image that could be used to illustrate it, and maybe you want to have a look at that. Uh, so why does alt text in particular matter? Uh, so that same large scale study of reader interactions with images that I mentioned earlier, actually found that readers use the images they see on page previews on Wikipedia to decide whether or not to view a full article. 
and readers are also more likely to open the media preview of images if an article is shorter or of lower quality. And these findings suggest that Wikipedia readers are using the images that illustrate Wikipedia articles to fill information gaps. So yes, they're illustration, but they're also information. So what happens when readers can't see those images? So this is where alt text comes in. It's basically text that's associated with an image that serves the same purpose and conveys the same essential information as the image. So that's the W3C definition. Um, a more sort of simple explanation is really, it's a visual description for readers who cannot see the image. And here's a demonstration, because most of you probably haven't used alt text before. Uh, here's a demonstration of what it actually uh, feels like and sounds like to use alt text. And this is where we find we don't have audio. Oh, we do. Uh, oh my, I'll turn that. doesn't have alt text. The reconstruction showed it not be enough. And now let's listen to an image that does have alt text. Looking by a photograph of a narrow kitchen with a window over the sink, plus a stool, built in storage, and adjustable lighting. The front of the kitchen view from the entrance. Now that might not have been such an important difference for most of you who can actually see the images. So now I'm going to turn those images off and we can see the difference that bulk text makes when you can't see the image. <coughs> so first up again, the image that doesn't have bulk text. The reconstruction showed that not the mm -hmm. And now the image that does have bulk text. Not in my photograph of a narrow kitchen with a window So that's how most people who use, uh, or who rely on alt text, uh, would experience it. Back with no or low vision. <laughs> but actually it's also really important for people with reduced connectivity. So you would have all had moments where you're using the internet and all you can see are broken images. And in fact some people choose to navigate the internet that way because they're trying to conserve bandwidth, data costs and all of that. So they'll actually choose to switch images off. And actually all of us benefit from images having long text because as another form of image description, alt text makes images more findable through search. Um, and particularly, you know, yeah, so, and this is an example of what is often called the curb cut effect, where something that was introduced as an accessibility intervention is actually used and appreciated by a wider group of people than the original design target. So it's named for the small sort of ramps on and off paths from, from roads that were originally designed for wheelchair users but actually made cities more accessible for parents pushing strollers or anyone else who had a sort of access need or, or was using wheels. Another example is closed captioning on TV, which is great if you're trying to learn another language or if you just need to keep the volume down because you have a small child who would, you, who would rather stay asleep. Um, and so how are we doing, like how are the Wikipedia projects and the Wikimedia movement doing at sort of addressing uh, this need? There are some positive signals, so alt text is detailed within English Wikipedia's manual of style. So there's an explanation of what it is and how you might approach it. But it's actually not a requirement for either featured article or quality image status. It's not something that we sort of think think it is essential for that kind of uh, status. Alt text editing events have been organised by affiliates. I know of affiliates in Poland, Ireland and Argentina doing work with alt text. And there have also been audio description projects, uh, such recorded descriptions of paintings in this case, 
organized by affiliates in Brazil and Estonia. So we see some of our communities actively engaging with this area of image description for accessibility. In 2022, the community approved a new Wikidata property for alt text, property P11265. Um, but while 50% of images on Wikipedia have captions, so that's the kind of visible description, contextual description below an image, actually only 10% of the images have alt text, and only 3% have alt text that is actually effective. Um, so what's going on with the rest? In 2021, I had some time on my hands and I looked at a sample of 3,000 files from the English language Wikipedia to, quality, to assess the quality of the alt text. And you know, in that 7%, I frequently found examples where the caption was simply copied into the alt text field, so the caption is read twice by a screen reader. The file name is copied into the alt text field, so the file name is read out. Or there is one, there's a one word description like image or photograph. Um, and these are some examples of like old text that I judged to be good that was broadly sort of doing what was intended um, for old text. So how can we make old text part of our practice as Wikimedians? There was a recent study of image accessibility on Wikipedia across all languages which suggested a solution. And it thought that it would be important, one, uh, to have tools to surface articles and images without accessibility coverage. And secondly, that mixed human AI systems might be important. So these systems may include a human supervised translation of the alt text um, used in other languages for the same image or automatic captioning models that may lower the participation barrier since it's easier to edit an existing text than it is to write one from scratch. And what is good old text anyway? Like this is very open to sort of debate and interpretation. Uh, the good old text on Wikipedia would be short and clear. It would focus on describing what can be seen. It would focus on what is relevant to the article, so it should be contextual. It would transcribe any words or graphics that appear in the image. And we should take care when identifying or describing people. Um, as I said earlier, some of our affiliates have been working with communities and accessibility specialists to answer this question of what is good alt text, how can we make it part of our practice, and I'll now hand over to Angie from Wikimedia Argentina to share what she, what she has learned so far. Thank you. Well, um, next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, from Wikimedia um, Argentina, we have developed two events during two macro events for bigger events uh, that are the English Description Week that was held in May in 2022 and uh, through all, the, uh, all October, during October, the English Description Month. And these two events uh, were related to make more accessible and uh, finally the images in the comments. So we, we invited more than 60 people uh, from museums, but also mainly from museums, but also from archives, from libraries, from, and from many different professions, like they were people from uh, uh, communication, sorry, communication, uh, cultural management, uh, well, people from museums that are educators, and that do a lot of things. <laughs> but they were, they had something in common, they were very, very interested in making images more accessible and finding out how to do this, of course, not only in Wikipedia, but also in their own field of work. So we involved uh, uh, two institutions, two organizations that are uh, NALA, that is, uh, stands for uh, Desarrollo Accessible Latinoamericano. It's an organization that works a lot with Altex and TNC Accessible Program, that is the program of
spoke as English. <laughs> well, indigenous community archive, let's say. And, and we selected one image and we I copied the, the text that we have been working with in so and I put that so that we could read what it is about. Uh, and there is a small uh, explanation of on the recommendations of how to talk to, to write a, a text. But it is like it has a lot of steps as you can see first you have to edit the article and then you have to find out the, the image you want to uh, improve the, the, uh, the text. Then you have to click on the image. Then there's uh, another window <laughs> where you have to edit. Then you write it, uh, you can read the caption, and then you have the space for your text. And then you click OK, and you publish the changes. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big uh, step <laughs> you have to do. So, well, now the journey continues, and she will show you something that <laughs> makes it very easy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're hoping to release a just edit on iOS to make the process that Andy just showed you simpler. So first, so we have a general understanding of what suggested edits is. Um, iOS, the iOS app wouldn't be the first tool to have suggested edits within like 50 projects. We have uh, suggested edits currently on Android, so if you have an Android device, you can go and get suggested edits right now. Um, but we don't have anything necessarily for adding alt text for suggested edits. We started out with um, article descriptions as the first suggested edits type on the Android app uh, and being able to translate it. It was pretty popular within the app as far as the suggested edits. Um, and we, but we did also get some feedback on how to make it better, and so I'll get to that part. <laughs> but um, other types of suggested edits on Android include uh, image captions, uh, as well as uh, edit control, which was recently released for select audiences. If it goes well, we scaled out from what people with us is to control edits, you know, anything about like Twinkle or Bubble and kind of like that, but with the Wikipedia app. Uh, and then the recommendations is available on uh, Android as a micro task to be able to add images to stubs or articles that do not currently have images. Uh, this is something that also Cormac can tell you about as well because he also worked on it. Um, and it's also on mobile web, so the growth team, they have it available for new editors to be able to add images um, to articles as well through mobile web. So the impact of what of suggested edits specifically on Android, um, I think it's okay. I, I have learned <laughs> not to be overly uh, ambitious in how happy I am about stuff. So um, I'll let you decide if this is good or not. Um, so of our edits that come through the app, seventy-three percent of them are through suggested suggested edits, and twenty-nine percent are um, through just the regular Wiki text editor. For a revert rate, you see that suggested edits, only 4% of them end up getting reverted, and whereas like 18% of Wikipedia edits get reverted, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I did like look at statistics specific to Spanish and Portuguese Wikipedia users, and I found that there's a higher proportion of users that use suggested edits on Spanish and Portuguese as compared to English Wikipedia or like Italian Wikipedia. So this is a slide that you saw earlier from Fiona. Um, and so one of the things that, you know, or two of the things she pointed out was it would be nice to have tools that surface opportunities to add alt text as well as AI systems. And so I'm hoping that we can address both of those things actually. Um, by the end of the fiscal year, so our fiscal year at the Wikimedia Foundation is July 2024. The impact we want to have is to increase unreverted mobile contributions um, from the iOS app by 10%. Um, we also want to enhance articles in some way, 20,000 articles, uh, through using suggested edits. 
It'll depend on the feedback we get from this round of if the tool to do that is the alt text tool. Or we may pivot to another suggest edit if we don't hit these markers by January. So we'll, you know, get feedback from the attendees here. We'll also get more feedback from editors and on stand Portuguese Wikipedia. And if we are able to hit some of these indicators, we'll continue to progress with that. If not, we may pivot to something else. But why um, adding alt text to images makes sense for iOS users uh, on apps. <coughs> like for the Wikipedia iOS uh, app in particular, Apple chose it as the editor's choice um, back in 2017 because of some of the cool features we have when it comes to accessibility being compliant with the WCAG, uh, use of voiceover on the app and the accessibility um, tools we have for that as well as dynamic type within the app. So let's say everything goes perfect, we all say we really love the prototype. This is an idea of what the long-term vision could look like. Uh, so this is the full feature if you know, things go well with the prototype. And so you would enter maybe through the explore feed uh, you do have to have log in or sign up to have an account. You would be able to choose topics that you care about, and then you would get your feed of suggested edits based on those topics. So, for the case of starting all types, also my designer did this, was very like wavy, like if you have a design, so it's not very advanced. You'll have your onboarding, it'll step you through the interface, the importance of Contextualizing your alt text, as Fiona mentioned earlier, being able to look at the um, the additional data by looking at the comments file. Uh, yeah, being able to yeah, so it's very lazy. Uh, yeah. yeah, so this is being able to look at the details of the image, and then you'll be able to go in to add your alt text. Um, it'll have some guidance, so you don't have to like click a button to kind of get some initial guidance and you can see some examples, you'll add in your own text, and you'll see there's suggestions as well, machine suggestions for all text that you can add in. You'll be able to listen to it just as if you had, were listening to it through a screen reader to get a feel for it, and then you would have published it, congratulations, you can view the data. So, uh, <laughs> this will be, if things work out, that will be what you all um, all right, so I know that there's very like understandable concerns about a machine suggesting alt text. Uh, and so we did test out new machine suggestions for article descriptions and uh, we did this back in 27, or we did this in 2021 after we received the feedback that the quality of article descriptions could be better, that even though we provided some guidance, people kind of needed a starting point. And so we partnered with the Swiss Institute's research uh, organization, which is called EPFL, and they were able to give us a machine model to kind of like nest it here so that people could still type out their own descriptions if they wanted to. They could choose one of the suggestions, and you see there's still an option if you want to edit it which we did some, see some people edit um, what the machine suggested and then be able to put, um, then be able to publish it. And so before just releasing it, because I really don't believe in releasing anything that has you know, AI and then not actually testing to see if it's okay, we had patrollers go through and provide quality scores to see if it was acceptable in cases of if it wasn't acceptable, uh, acceptable, why? And we also put restrictions on article descriptions for biographies of living persons, so we wouldn't have things like uh, one of the terms that our research would use, like ethnic hallucination. So it reading the contents of an article and making an assumption about the ethnicity of someone and putting that in the article description. So we were able to put guardrails for cases like that. And the outcome of that experiment um, what we saw was uh, like quite a few people published, and this was in a 30-day period, by the way, it was like controlled A-B test. Uh, 
so we saw quite a few people that published uh, the machine accepted suggestions without making any modification, which means they didn't add any words to it. Uh, we saw here that the quality score was higher than just plain human generated. It also is interesting that when people modified the suggestion from the machine, the quality score went down based on the graders. Uh, the feedback from the graders. We also saw the revert rate. Like, would they would the graders revert it? Would was uh, lower for the suggestions from the machine that people accepted through versus uh, human generated, which had the highest revert rate versus the one where uh, they worked with the machine. And then the difference, the distinction that we made between revert and rewritten is revert is like, is this so egregiously wrong it needs to be removed right now? Versus rewritten, it's like, it's not bad, like it can stay up, but I probably would have written this in a better way. So that's the distinction between the two of them. And you see for the machine accepted modified, uh, it had a higher, I would probably rewrite this rate versus just plain human generated. Um, other thing may be worth note that we saw a higher return rate than a seven day period for people that were using the suggestions of the machine versus those that just wrote it out. Okay, so um, this is where we are on our journey. You see this road here is not done. Uh, we have built it. You're going to see the prototype today. We're doing our consultation period. And then we're going to partner with accessibility specialists for them to evaluate um, what's submitted through the prototype tool. So the things that you will submit today, if you are brave enough to try out the tool and submit to all text, uh, We'll have uh, possibly valid or some other go through it and determine if it would be causing more harm or good by releasing this feature. Let's say they're like, yes, this is great. You all did a wonderful job. Um, we'll iterate to add in some, of, some additional features uh, and then test it out and then hopefully release in March 2024 and decide from there. If the feedback we get is like it's medium and we can make improvements. We'll figure out what those improvements are and then go from there. So this is how you can stay connected to it. But I also have it written on these cards that everyone can have a card if you want to follow along with the project on our media page. And now we can actually test. So if you have an iPhone, you can just test on your own phone uh, or iPad. Also works on iPad. If you do not have an iPhone or an iPad, then you can come up and have some test devices and um, do this. But should we is, take questions first? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How, how long do we have? One hour. And we're supposed to start with more.
So maybe we could do our first course. <laughs> No, 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 no,